Ugh, it's getting dust and hair everywhere. Welcome back to the workbench, everybody. Um, this is Matt with House of Vacuums, and today we've got a, uh, a sad state of affairs. Um, we've got this dirt devil, which is one of the saddest little vacuums you ever did see, um, just because it's a giant turd sandwich. Um, so in any case, the owner stated that it's not picking up um, and I just tried it. Uh, I didn't want to use it here on the workbench because bagless vacuums can get dusty. I didn't know if it was going to poof all over my camera equipment, but it didn't. But it definitely does sound clogged. Uh, so we're going to check this out, check out the air pathways in the filter and see what's going on. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the cup off the dust bin as it were and we are going to take this guy and check out this filter so there we go so this guy has a pleated filter covered in foam not the most advanced design ever but a lot of machines are still using something similar to that even meal is still using something similar to that uh, you'd think that now the root cyclones are off of patent, uh, everybody would be using them, but <laughs> it just doesn't seem to be the case. A 50, well, maybe 60 or $70 upright, um, you know, you could get them on clearance probably for 50 bucks. This is a very inexpensive machine, so you don't expect the world out of that. This was getting dust and fuzzies all over the place, so I just kind of wanted to take care of that real quick before I moved on with looking at the machine. So there's all getting dust everywhere. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can see all the goodness that's up here underneath that. This is a sign of a vacuum that's not cleaning because all of this dirt should have been accessible to the nozzle, and it obviously didn't pick it up. Um, so either a low powered poorly designed machine or it's clogged maybe a combination of both in this case <laughs> that's why it's not picking up let's check the air pathways just to make sure they're clear and then i'll show you what's been going on okay so i just tried to vacuum out the handle which is doubles as the wand and um, it definitely sounded clogged. This hose did not. Let's see if I can see light down through this thing. I can, I can see light through this. So that's not clogged. It definitely sounded like there was something going on though in this length. Let's try removing that and we'll suck from right here. Oh yeah. Again, nothing my Mila can't handle, but uh, check that out. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Pine needles, the perennial enemy of cheap vacuums everywhere. Um, yeah, every year, every single year, guys. Post Christmas is our busiest season because of pine needles, wrapping materials, people cleaning for a family, um, just all of it combined. This is the absolute been most bananas time for repairs um, because of all of that. So, and this, so this does not surprise me. Um, 
Okay, now what we want to do is, um, now that we've got that clog taken care of, they had this set up incorrectly. Um, so, this guy goes right here. And then he needs to be clipped into, if we can move him further down, he needs to be clipped into the handle right here. Um, it's not a smart air pathway, but it is what it is. There we go. That's how it's supposed to work. So before they didn't have anything hooked up here and this is, um, this goes down, the air comes in here, comes around here, then dips around here and to the cup. This is a clog waiting to happen. I know that the clog was in the nozzle, but a lot of times it's because air speed gets so low as the, um, as the air gets down to the floor. So what we've got is a 90 right here. Then we've got a 180 degree turn into like a little like 30 degree turn up here to like a 30 and then again a 180 until it heads back down to the floor, which when you get down to the floor when it's being used, this also is going to be bent. You know, if you're using it like this, you've got like a 30 degree turn. So all in all, I've gone over this before with you guys, air pathways matter. You want them to be straight um, or as straight as possible. Obviously, completely straight is not possible, but you want them to be as straight as possible because uh, anytime you start making those bends, you're going to, again, create uh, air turbulence. You're going to slow down airspeed um, and you're going to create places where uh, foreign material can get stuck and clog the machine. And this is just, again, poorly designed, cheap machine. It is just not designed to keep from clogging. So, fortunately, I'm going to go ahead and dump this. I'll probably regret it. So, yeah, if, the, if this customer was to service this, again, it would cost more than the price of the machine when it was new. So I don't blame them for not servicing it, but don't get on my case about not cleaning it up as much as you think I should. Um, Cause again, they did not want this serviced. All right, so that's good. Gonna go ahead and throw that back on here. This is such an inexpensive machine. I would think that they would probably, it, it, it will break in the next year to two years, no doubt. Um, so they will be back in the market for a vacuum. Um, so the most that we can do at this point is, you know, tell them that we fixed what was wrong and that, um, and that, you know, it might be time to start saving up for something better in a year or two. So, uh, but in any case, this will get them back on the road. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn this on and let you hear what it sounds like. I'm, again, I'm not going to do it on the bench because, again, the dust was getting pretty out of hand. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. All right. Appreciate you coming along with me on this repair. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell so you get notifications. And, of course, we will see you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.